Greetings, fellow fishermen, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Dredge, Episode 1, Angler Wanted. Monday, day one at six in the morning. The morning light fills your eyes, and you try to sit upright. You're lying on the cold, wet dock where you collapsed the night before. A short man is shouting orders at a handful of workers disembarking from a boat nearby. The man notices you. Welcome to Greater Morrow. I must say, quite the dramatic first impression. I see you've already introduced yourself to the jagged rocks along the bay. Did you not see the lighthouse? It was shining right at you. Ah, well, I'm glad to see our new fisherman upright and breathing. Your boat was hopelessly damaged, but I had a few of the locals move your things to one of our old vessels. We'll catch up later to discuss more details. I'll let you get out there to catch some fish. See if you can fill your cargo while you get your bearings in the light. Hmm. Finally, I don't suppose I need to say this, but get back by sundown before the fog rolls in. Keep a close eye on the time. It can really creep up on you. So the first pursuit is a fresh start. So let's go into the menu. Up here is time and compass and location. Uh, down here is whatever actions you can take. This being on dock. And then you can also hit tab to access your boat. And more things will be added to the tab menu soon. Um, it will tell you your boat speed, your fishing speed, and how good your lights are. Also, uh, what kind of fish can be caught in your local area. How much damage there is to your boat. Once your boat becomes fully damaged, you sink and you'll have to load a previous save. And then... Pursuits, which is like quests, messages, which you find that pushes some of the backstory along map and encyclopedia, which logs the types of fish and crabs and the like that you can catch. So here is the current pursuit. A fresh start. Catch fish for the day. Uh, met the mayor of Greater Marrow and sent me out to catch some fish and find my bearings. Seems nice enough. Warned me to get back before nightfall, though. Said something about the fall, uh, fog. A bit dramatic. So let's go into the map. So here we have the Marrows. Greater Marrow is the larger of the Marrows Islands, and there's also Little Marrow. Uh, then we have some of the other islands. And as you can imagine, you are not supposed to leave the Marrows not yet. Um, the game progresses uh, sort of in counterclockwise fashion, uh, starting with the Gale Cliffs. So start with Marrows, go to Gale, and so on and so forth. Uh, actually, no, Stellar Basin. Well, whatever, you'll see. Um, then for messages, I have none, but you can see how many you can collect if you're a completionist. And then Encyclopedia. And this is all of the fish and aber aberrations of fish that you can catch, the different zones that you can find them in, coastal, shallow, oceanic, abyssal, adal, volcanic, and mangrove. And then the physical locations, Marrows, Gale Cliffs, Stellar Basin, so on and so forth. And you can see that there is a lot of them. You don't have to catch them all to beat the game, but uh, you will have to catch a considerable amount of them. So let's go out and fish for the day. Move forward with WASD. Also, I uh, might add, if you bump into the shore, uh, your, your boat gets damaged. So don't bump if you can help it. Rotate the camera and adjust the height. And find fishing spots, and it looks like disturbed water just ahead. And then press F to start fishing. So over on the right, you see the cargo of the boat. 
I have a peculiar engine uh, propelling me at uh, an extra 14 knots. Um, if this gets damaged, you still move at a base speed. So if you break your engine somehow, you can put along, but very slowly. And then the basic fishing pole, which um, compounds with the base fishing speed. And all these things can be improved. And then also your cargo space. So it is a bit like a backpack Tetris, like uh, Escape from Targov or something like that, to try to fit fish in, because fish are not just one square each. So let's, uh, let's start picking. So the way this fish works is on every green, you just hit F to pull. There's different ways to, to fish. Not all of them are like quick time events like this. Some are passive, like trawler nets and crab traps. Uh, and then not even all of the fishing is a circular dial like this, like I'm lock picking or something like that. But this is essentially how to fish. And then if you miss it, um, you, all what, what happens if you fail to hit the mark is it, time will pass. Basically, it's a race against time for sunset. And I have fished this spot to completion. And we can just putt around and uh, try to find other things to catch. Uh, generally speaking, the larger the fish, the more money there is to be made from that fish. So really small, like blue mackerels, aren't going to be worth much. There's also the concept of aberrations and trophies, and we'll get into that once I start to catch them. So here is a good example. This disturbed wire water requires shallow and I don't have a fishing pole that allows me to fish up shallow fish. So I don't have the right equipment for this spot. It looks like skates. So I have to pass that up in lieu of going somewhere else. And here is a cod spot. Also, my dad, I am not great at the quick time events, so uh, I will be missing some of these and probably embarrassingly often. And here, as you can see, I'm just doing the fishing Tetris to squeeze all of the cod in. Belhar and Zero Fox Gibbon, thank you for uh, the resubs. So here we go, another shallow zone I cannot uh, fish yet. There's also bottles. So up ahead, you can see the yellow glint, and that indicates it is like a unique item. So let's put on over and collect it. And this here happens to be a message in a bottle. Morning of the second day of the honeymoon, and our first uh, day proper. Today, we're sailing around the islands and inlets at the back of Greater Marrow. I love the rocks here. The layers and colors are so striking. Furthermore, the fishing is relatively poor in these shallows, so I know he will keep uh, his hands on the wheel instead of the rods. He renamed the boat last night, Julie. He did fancy renaming. Uh, he did a fancy renaming ceremony and everything. I think he took that more seriously than the wedding. Supposedly, it's very important to perform it correctly, lest you want ill fortune to follow the vessel. He wanted to throw away everything with the old name on it, but I kept the keychain. Ocean's Riches was a good name. I think he was prepared. Uh, I think he has prepared a surprise picnic lunch. I can't see the basket. Uh, I can see the basket half hidden, stuffed under the blanket in the front of the cabin. I love when he tries to be romantic. There's also things to collect later on, like debris, and it will tell me I do not have the right equipment for this spot because I require a dredge. The game is named Dredge, after all. You also have buoys. So these buoys sort of indicate where it is roughly safe to travel. As a nighttime comes in, it gets rather dark. And uh, let's continue fishing up the cod. And I'm going to demonstrate what happens when you miss one of the quick time events. So you can totally skip it. And as you can see, the fish uh, proceeds to get pulled up. And then if you make a mistake, you lose some progress time. Um, so it's not critical when you make mistakes. You don't miss your catch, per se. It just takes a lot longer uh, as you continue to fail. Then one thing that happens is during nighttime, a new subset of fish are able to be caught. So some fish can only be caught during the day and then some at night. So this is the nighttime. As you can see, the fog has rolled in and visibility has been cut 
uh, tremendously. And I was able to catch squid, arrow squid, instead of cod or mackerel. So if I want to absolutely fill up the boat, I'm going to have to get, like, one more cod. But I don't think I absolutely need to fill up the boat full. I can start to make my way back. Now, this is uh, one really important thing. The concept of panic. So up here, you have an eyeball. And this eyeball represents sort of the panic level that, or the insanity level of you, the fisherman. As you spend more time in the dark, you will start to hallucinate. And these hallucinations can harm you and kill you. Um, so it is very, very important to rest. Um, you don't need to rest necessarily every day, although I would advise it. But uh, don't let your panic get out of hand, because what you can start to do is you can hallucinate rocks and hallucinate enemies and sharks and boats and all sorts of manner that will come to attack you. So keep your hallucinations tamped down. All right. You cannot uh, collide with the dock uh, generally speaking, anything that has tires on it will not cause damage to your boat. But uh, any little tapping of even the sands of the shore are going to cause damage. So that is something to be avoided. You step onto the dock at Greater Marrow. The mayor is waiting nearby. I see you've returned in one piece. Very good. Before you head off to town, we should discuss the matter of your boat. As I mentioned earlier, your old boat was too badly damaged to be repaired. However, I'm more than happy to sell you that particular uh, replacement vessel, yours to own. I understand that you may not have the necessary funds on hand, so we'll consider it a loan. But I want to make this easy for you. Until your debt is repaid, a tiny portion of your fish sales will go to paying it off. A small amount of interest will go to improving the town. So to recap... You'll need to sell fish to the local market, paying off your debt, and in turn, keeping the population fed and satisfied. Understand. Where do I sell the fish? Our local fishmonger will appraise and purchase what you catch. He's open all hours. Off you go then. Sell those fish while they're still fresh. So here is the ship loan repayments and how much money is required to repay those loans. Uh, you can also put things in storage. I do not advise, unless there is a reason to do it, to put fish in storage. Uh, fish will go stale. So as you can see, the mackerel that I caught early in the day is already stale, whereas the cod and the arrow squid are still fresh. Uh, it goes from fresh, stale, and then rotting. And um, as you can imagine, there's not really a market for rotting fish, save for some particular quests. You enter the squalid shack, on the fringe of the marketplace, the familiar smell of fish fills the air. Flies buzz haphazardly around the downcast man behind the counter. <sighs> hey, Ascendancy Dota, thank you for the th thank you for the raid, and uh, soul blader for the uh, the resub. Cheers. You're the new fisherman, eh? Surprise! They found a new one so fast. Now, what happened to the other one? He. Uh, it takes a certain type of person to last out here. It's not a life for everyone. Anyway, to business. I'll pay you for fish. Bigger and fresher means more money. Some species are just worth more, too. Other towns on other islands might pay you different. But while you still got debt outstanding here, I suggest you work on paying it off first. Hmm. So let's see what you got. So you can see the individual prices by mousing over them. Like uh, 623 or 1683, or you can just hold F to sell them all in one bulk. Boom. So now I have sold the fish, all 12, and my jet debt has been adjusted. The mayor is standing outside the fishmonger's store. Excellent work. I have no doubt you'll be able to provide for this town. Look here, I found this down by the docks. I'm sure someone like you could make something of it, out of it. Why don't you take it? So this is a research part. Oh, and one last thing. Our local shipwright mentioned she might be able to make some modifications to your ship. You should pay her a visit. 
So let's go to the shipwright, and you can see I have $30 left to repay in Greater Marrow. As you walk into the yard, you see the shipwright making repairs to a damaged hull. She looks up at you briefly before turning back to her work. You must be the new fisherman. I can make improvements to your vessel in the yard. Mind you, I'm not in the business doing favors around here. Payment is up front, and everything takes some time to install. Also, if you take any damage from the rocks or any damage at all, I can patch it up, mostly. She shrugs and gestures to the hull she's currently attempting to repair. A number of wooden boards, all well above the waterline, are splintered and scratched. Above the waterline, huh? Uh, take a look around. Just remember, the bigger the equipment, the longer it takes to install, so plan ahead. So over here, you have the parts available to us. So we have a simple skimmer, which allows you to catch shallow fish in the shallows. Uh, my basic rod only does coastal. And then this one, which is a weighted line. And the difference between these, not only size, right, two size or three size, is also fishing speed. So this speeds up fishing 10%, and this speeds up fishing 40%. And price. Um, we've got engines. So I can also buy an engine to add to the back of the ship. And there's specific spaces. So, for instance, these hook spaces are for fishing line. These are for lights. Now, let me move that. This is for light. This is for engines. And you can only install those parts in that specific slot. So there's a limited amount of space for uh, fishing, for engines, for nets, and for lights. And there's some other additional equipment that gets unlocked later on. So here is the trawl nets. I don't have any unlocked. And here are the lights, and uh, I can also buy them as well. I'm not ready to buy anything just yet. Going into the cabin, we have the encyclopedia. So this encyclopedia will track uh, what you've caught. Like, I've caught five blue mackerel, and then the record for the largest one. It also tracks, and this is how to read it, it tracks where you can catch it, the marrows. It can track how to catch one, rod or trawl. So there's rod, trawl, and crab pots. And then it also tells you when you can catch it. So macro are only out during the day as our cod, whereas the arrow squid are only out at night. And then also shows you the price. So arrow squid are worth 14 and are two sized and mackerel are worth 10 and are two sized. So if you were to catch only mackerel, only arrow squid, obviously the answer is pretty, pretty guaranteed. Catch the one that is worth more. Uh, so let's go ahead and buy something for the ship, shall we? Uh, so what should I buy? Light, fishing rod, or engine? And I'll give you one minute to vote on that. It's in the top left of the screen. So if I bought a fishing rod, the only one I can afford is the simple skimmer. This will allow me to catch uh, fish in the shallows. If I bought an engine, I could buy the rusty outboard engine. And this would add an extra 10 knots to my boat speed of 24, bringing me up to 34. Uh, and if I bought a light, it would... The only one I can afford is the cheapest one, the cracked bulb. And it has a range of 10 meters and a lumen of 500. All right, does look like fishing rod is taking the win. So I'm going to buy a simple skimmer here. And you can also rotate these things, so I can position it however I want, but I'm going to install it right here. So this is one thing to notice. It has an install time of two hours, so it will take two hours of me just sitting here waiting for it to be installed. And you can also just send it straight to the storage or refund it. Uh, obviously, I want to buy it, so let's get it installed. And two hours now have passed. Now, let's get to research next. So these are the different things you can research. At the moment, pots and nets are locked. And the way to read this is I can research these things and some have prerequisites. So for instance, this allows me to catch coastal, shallow, and oceanic, but it also requires all the other rods to be unlocked first. Um, some of these equipment can't be unlocked. So this, for instance, cannot be unlocked just yet. It's unlocked due to the story. Uh, so we have a flexible fishing pole, which does both coastal and shallows. We have this hydraulic rod, which does oceanic. So oceanic would allow me to catch deeper ocean fish. Um, and then engines. This is an improved outboard engine, which would speed me up. So what to research? Rods or engines?
And there's also size requirements as well. So knowing, for instance, my ship specifically, I do not have the space for like really large rods or engines yet because I have a teeny little uh, dinky ship. Uh, but this, of course, gets unlocked later on. And it looks like uh, looks like rods are going to win yet again. So let's invest in rods. And thank you for voting so quickly. So I'm going to decide to get the hydraulic rod. The reason for this is I would love to be able to catch oceanic fish, whereas I already am able to catch coastal and shallow. So by unlocking this, it makes it for sale. I don't get one for free. Uh, so if I go to the ship right here, here is the hydraulic rod and it costs 410. So I have uh, considerably more money to make before I gain access to it. But it will fit in this uh, this little spot here. So one thing that we might try to do is to get that improved rod in this, this 1x3 and then the hydraulic uh, rod in the 2x2. If that's how we decide to, uh, to unlock future. So let's go to rest. Wait till dawn. And get out fishing again. But also, let's check out the pursuits. So I have fresh start done. So my current pursuit is really just make money. As I haven't discovered any other things in the story. I know where they are. I've played this before, but uh, I want to show you somewhat of an organic uh, way to proceed through the story. Now, not a speed run. I'm not trying to speed run. So another thing that I haven't shown is the action wheel. So the action button is right click. And right now my lights are in action. I also have a foghorn. And a spyglass. And a spyglass lets me look a little bit further out to spot things from a distance, like dredging wood planks or a message in a bottle or skates in the shallows. And there's other abilities that get unlocked later on. A floating buoy. It serves to mark safe passage. And it also provides a brief respite of cutting through the gloom of the night. All right, let's let's get some unique species, ones that I have not caught before. So here we go, a golf flounder. Oh, that, uh, so here's an instance, and I ruined it, but uh, where there was a trophy fish to be caught, which was that yellow marker that I missed. And trophy fish sell for more than uh, their non-trophy counterparts. They're just bigger and earn you more scratch. I know that mackerel isn't worth very much, so let's skip over the mackerel to something uh, worth a little bit more. So this is cod. How to find this game? Uh, just on Steam. If you're, if that's what you're asking, or are you asking, do I like it? I do like the game. It's um, it's a relatively short game for the price, but it is a lot of fun. It's very engrossing and will sort of draw you into the story pretty quickly. There's virtually no replayability, however, I will mention. And there's no difficulty levels or anything like that. Um, it does take some effort to be completely completionist, however. So like, the average time to beat might be somewhere between 10 and 15 hours. Hmm. So here we go. The fishmonger uh, has a special order of one golf flounder and one great eel. You'll need to have a rod that can handle shallow water to catch them. So I'm going to say yes, I do in fact have the gray flounder, or the golf flounder, so I'm going to hand one over. I actually might want to, well, I could try to min-max it and hand him the smallest one, and actually, I, just by chance, I did, because the other ones are going to be worth more. So let's go ahead and grab that eel for this special order. And uh, for the special order, uh, he'll pay more. So the current pursuit right now is caught to order. Which is only really going to take me like a minute. If 
think we can get there in time. All right. This is a slightly different looking wheel, but it's functionally not all that different from the other ones. You just hit F when you're in the green. And we've depleted that spot. It is also getting pretty dark. Here's a new type of fish. We got black groupers and there was only one. And I'm not really able to find very much with... Oh. So here's an example of hallucinated rock. This rock right here. See how it kind of phases in and out? That's because my panic level is up a bit. I have heightened levels of panic. And if you're wondering, colliding with that does very real damage. Uh, so you got to be careful of those hallucinations. Oh, here's another one. Sorry, Rock. I moved too slowly for you to catch me with my pants down. A hunched woman approaches you from the steps uh, to the lighthouse. She stops some distance away and looks at you with concern and visible apprehension. Why are you here? I've come to fish. There's nothing here for someone like you anymore. Do yourself a favor and move on. She turns and shuffles back along the path that leads to the light. And there's something the mayor wants to say, but I'm going to sell my fish first. Hmm. So here is the special order um, eel. I'm just going to give him the worst one. Hmm. Hmm. I got another order here. This one, a little more curious. They want a couple of squid and a whole black grouper. I don't see many people fishing squid these days. They only feed at night. Hmm. Have you got any of those fish to order? I do, in fact, have the grouper. Selling the other fish. I only have $9 of debt left, and let's talk to the mayor. Just the person I was hoping to see. Why is the mayor up at uh, 1.17 in the morning? I do not know. Uh, will you be sailing out east towards Little Marrow? Would you give this package to the dock worker there, please? All right. The mayor hands you a small, damp package bound in string. It's dripping slightly. The dock worker will pay you upon delivery. Please be quick about it. I don't want it to spoil. Don't forget to check your compass and map if you get lost. All right, let's go to Little Marrow now. I mean, the mayor did give me a free boat, so... And perhaps catch... Uh, the arrow squid on our way over. So Little Marrow is the red X on the map, which is just to our east. Which is that tiny little town across the bay. Here's the squid that I was tasked uh, to fish. I already got the two I needed. Might, might as well make a little bit more money. And as you can see, the eye in the top center of the screen is getting even more panicked. We're like closing in on maximum panic. And I think it's probably worth showing you what happens when you kind of don't sleep for the day or the night. Um... The game, I will spoil a little bit, kind of forces you to sleep a little bit. Okay. Hmm. What? A delivery? Let's see here. He tears a small hole into the paper and peeks inside. You can't say for sure, but it feels as though he's shielding it from your view. Hmm. Yeah, nice and fresh. This'll do nicely. I'm to pay you, I suppose. He hands you some money. 25 added. Mm. I was given this old book a few year, weeks back, but it didn't make much sense to me. You'll surely get more use out of it. 
So sustainable fishing added to the cabin. He pulls out a crumpled book from his back pocket and hands it over to you. A number of pages are folded over. Keep it in your cabin. Perhaps you can read it while you're on the water. Stop by for a chat anytime. I know how lonely it can be. Right. Before we go into that, let's go over to the cabin. So here is the bookshelf. Um, what reading books does is it provides some sort of passive bonus to you. And you can pick on which book to read. And the way to read is just the passage of time. There's no way to really speed it up other than to rest or accelerate time in some way. It's not urgent. It's not something you actively have to do. You will eventually get these things unlocked. Uh, but before we go anywhere else, let's talk to the dock worker again. What's it like working on the docks? As changeable as the weather. Ha. Huh. Most days it's pretty quiet. The pay is not too great, but the work's straightforward, and that suits me to a T. It's good to get the fresh sea breeze without actually being on the water. No offense, but you wouldn't get me out uh, on those seas every day. What else can I do for you? All right. And let's talk to the trader. You enter a brightly lit shop. It's packed with antiques, the shelves full of jewelry and other baubles. An old man peers at you over silver spectacles. Hello. Is that? No. Ah, uh, I don't believe we've met. Forgive me. My eyes aren't there. Aren't what they used to be. I specialize in antiques and jewelry. I'll purchase any special trinkets you happen to have. Have you got anything nice with you today, perhaps? And no, I do not. So my panic level is fever pitched at this point. Uh, I am going to try to deliver the special order back to the fishmonger, these arrow squid, before they go rotted. And then maybe have myself a nice sleep. Give them the worst ones. <laughs> Eighty-four sixty. I didn't think it ha you had it in you. Night fishing is a tall order. Yeah, I I get that. I'll let you know when I get more orders in. For now, on to business as usual. Selling the remaining arrow squid and. I only have $5 worth of repayments to make, so I need to sell about, uh, well, 10 times that, about $50 worth or $53 worth of stuff. But for, before we go any further, I can make some additional investments. So I'm gonna try to buy uh, an engine because it will speed me up incredibly. It will be really nice and get that installed. I don't have enough money yet for the hydraulic rod but I also buy a cloudy lens. The better of the two lights. Now I'm gonna rest a little bit just to get rid of my panic. And then right when the panic eye goes away, I can wake up and head on out. So the fish monger doesn't have any orders for me yet. So we're just going to go fishing. Very generic. Azure Storm, thank you for the, uh, the resub. Starting your second year of subbing. <laughs> I appreciate it. And one thing that we could do is we can, um, maybe not tonight or uh, today, but we can start to explore more of this island. I just don't want to do it uh, right before sundown for panic reasons. So here's an oceanic catch, which looks like a shark below me, but I'm not going to be able to catch it without the hydraulic rod. So it doesn't seem like there's much of a difference between day and night fishing. What I can say is the night fish are worth more. Um, and then there is considerably more danger fishing at night. I will also say that much. Wait a slight uh, accident yesterday around the shallows at the back of the Greater Marrow. A rock seemingly appeared out of nowhere and struck the front of the boat. 
It did not penetrate the hull, but it jostled us around, and a few items fell overboard into the water. We did not see what they were, uh, which is some concern, but we believe all important art articles are accounted for. We've been checking over some notes from the boat uh, renaming ceremony. He is paranoid that he performed the steps incorrectly. I've never known him to be so superstitious. I don't want back roll. So you can see some of the uh, special items that are bound because I don't have hydraulic rods. And now we are into night catch territory. And I'm going to poke over to this north island that I've not yet visited. Points of interest are uh, labeled with the little black dots on the map. Blackstone Isle. The door is locked. The workshop looks as though it hasn't been used in decades. It is also locked. So in these types of places, uh, one thing that is useful is you can access your storage. It's a universal storage locker. So the stuff I put on other islands can be accessed here through game magic. And then also you can rest at a lot of these spots. Uh, but I am not too panicked. I want to go out. Catch some night fish, make some money. I am not scared of the dark. And you can see the, the light in front is cast a little bit, so I have uh, better visibility than I did without that light. I think these are the black groupers. Oops. The lighthouse towers above. Waves crash endlessly against the perilous rocks below. All creatures, human or other eyes, would have their brittle bo bodies broken and thrown at its feet. You ponder the intrinsic power of this structure, a vast column of stone shouldering the responsibility of countless lives. How long will it stand? How long until it decays into ruins? Its purpose exhausted. The lighthouse towers above. I'm going to want to turn in uh, probably after this catch, just so that I'm not so panicked for tomorrow. Because daylight hours shan't be wasted. And I'm already at... Uh, I'm already quite panicked. I, I will say, the bay between Greater, Little, and Blackstone Isle is sort of protected from the real threats that you'll find on the map. It's sort of the newbie safe zone, so it might seem safe to go out at night, but uh, it's an illusion. Oh my, you look exhausted. You're not forgetting to get some sleep, are you? Taking frequent breaks is an important part of being productive. Well, I want to pay off my debt, so let's do it. Boom, I have paid it off. The mayor is walking quickly towards you. He seems to be in a good mood with a spring in his step. Fantastic news. Thanks partly to your efforts, Greater Morrow is growing. Our town is sure to be swarming with visitors any day now. In fact, we've granted a consent uh, for the shipwright to expand her facilities. The old dry dock is operational again. I've also allocated some money to prove the shipmongers at services. He might have something to talk to about soon. Keep up the good work. Glad you've chosen to be here with us. So here's the dry dock. This is the dry dock. We can make significant improvements to your vessel here. We're talking extra space, more attachment points for equipment, and even superior hulls. 
We need a decent stock of hard materials for these projects. Lumber, metal scraps, that sort of thing. How do we get materials? Uh. There's plenty of decent materials around the coast, from various shipwrecks and the like. I'm sure we'll find a way to get at them. Materials assigned towards upgrades will be stored. Uh, so you don't have to worry if you only have half of what we need. So here is the upgrade tree. Where... And this is how to read it. So right now I have access to two more rod spaces, four net spaces, two engine spaces, or one light space. And if you click on them, you can see the cost. So for instance, if I wanted to do four nets, it would require two bolts of cloth and lumber, and then also money. This requires metal scraps, cloth, two lumber, two metal scraps and lumber, two lumber and metal scraps. And then once you get all that, you get a new hull which um, upgrades your hull, makes it uh, harder to get destroyed, you know, sustain more damage, and then also adds additional space. So this is the entire tree that you'll have access to. Ah. Okay, and she uh, gave me a free engine and then also pulled out a book for me to read. So the... Oh no, she didn't give me a free engine, but the peculiar engine. Ah. She's just warning me not to be overtired. All right. So the amount of money that I have right now, I'm not really going to be able to afford anything. So we just need to earn more. Uh, let me take a very quick rest. And here's the new book, Correct Engine Operation, which I'll read once I get sustainable fishing done. Luckily... Our uh, main character doesn't require too much sleep. A few hours, a few winks, and he's good to go. So the only, only other island that I haven't hit up yet is to the north. Um, this point of interest here, this little black circle at uh, K10. So maybe I'll head over there, but let's take a look at the current pursuits that I have available to me. Just waiting for more orders. There's really no progress to be made on that just yet. Now, as you can imagine, some of these islands are very far away. So, part of the upgrade tree is that you end up um, encouraging to get more engine speed so that you can cover more distance in a given day to get to the other islands. Because this little puddle jumper isn't going to be able to make it very far. So sustainable fishing. 10% uh, chance to not reduce fish stocks when catching a fish with a rod. Next we'll do correct engine operation. And we have a little dock out here to check out. Seal point. Alright, let's try to just fish everything I can on the way back. A lot of these uh, disturbed water is debris. And I'm going to need a dredge to be able to get at the debris. So there's not a lot to be done there. Oh, no. Oh, they're still here. So we've got a stingray. Let me try to arrange this so that I can catch another stingray. A lot of it is uh, sort of the... The Tetris playing. And, and then, of course, you can also throw out fish. Uh, and next time I catch a fish, I can also show you that you have a temporary holding area. So, for instance, I don't have room for this uh, grouper. Right? But I can stick it here to rearrange my other fish to make room. If I think that uh, there's a better, you know, sort of arrangement to permit. So, if I really wanted the grouper... I could throw out the mackerel, take the grouper, and uh, that might be more profitable. Because the ship's full, let's get back. I bet those stingrays fetch 
much nicer of a price than some of the other garbage I've been selling. Catch all the stingrays and Steve Irvin's name. Yeah, I don't. I think uh, dearly beloved Steve probably would not want stingrays killed in his name, though. My guess is he'd want the inverse. Thank you for tuning in to Dredge, which originally streamed live on Twitch April 4th and April 5th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you'd like to join my gaming community, Rodamont.com also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you in next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow fishermen, 